Here. 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 <laughs> What's going on? We have our first guest today. Yeah, and probably our last, to be honest, after this shit is done. <laughs> so we're joined today by our uh, very close, very dear friend and brother from college who now goes by Dalton, but who we know as Garrett. So if you hear us calling him Garrett, we're talking about Dalton Johnson. Van life and photography extraordinaire. Garrett, why don't you give yourself a little introduction? uh put on the spot uh intro for self yeah so um i mean since graduating college with these fools um uh, i was actually a year older so um still are kind of <laughs> still yeah still, <laughs> still am. Uh, yeah <clears throat> uh um, well, we caught up to you dude did you i was yeah dude i paused it you know it's crazy how time works like that especially when you live in the woods right um uh, but uh yeah graduated and then went and learned about outdoor education became a photographer and lived in a van and pretty much haven't looked back since uh 2016. all right you're missing a little bit though <laughs> like Same how you... the, the no well the... you're missing you're missing the part about how you went to grad school like after undergrad graduation what did you do all right, so you want me to like dive in deep here? Yeah, so I mean, when? graduated, graduated 2016. I actually graduated early from college, um, and then took some time for myself. Went to New Zealand and cycled around the South Island. Um, that bicycle or motorcycle? I forget. Bicycle. Bicycle. Yeah, um, it was super rad. I uh, loved that trip, and then kind of came back. I, I made a promise. I, I played water polo at Santa Clara. And so I was like, told everyone that I would come back. And so came back, played my last season and also pay, went to grad school. Um, and so I, once I came back, I started grad school. Then the season started in the fall. Um, as soon as winter came around, I dropped out of grad school and cause my water polo career was done and uh, went and did outdoor education and um, lived on a bicycle for six more months then moved into a car and then moved in and then i was in a car for like a year and a half i think and then moved into like a really shitty van for like almost two years and then that doesn't add up but so 2019 i bought the van i live in now and i'm still in the van That's, so what's yeah. next a houseboat uh next an airplane an, nah, uh, in an water, water. world I would go backwards to a motorcycle or a bicycle for probably like for a project. And then um, once that project would finish, I'd hopefully buy a sailboat and then start the next project. Yep. So, when are you going to, yep. when are you going to Alex Honnold and get married, have a kid, buy a house in Vegas? <laughs> uh probably not vegas uh the climbing is sick in vegas i, I have climbed in red rocks is, is really nice but um i i really like the coast um kids nothing i don't know um uh, kind of like whatever life would <laughs> whatever life Garrett's would kids, i'm just teasing now, you if you're yeah. listening looking back on this like <laughs> yeah so this is a good time stamp <laughs> question uh short question so i never knew Okay, did you drop out of grad school? Like, was that your plan? It was just to do it until water polo finished? Because I didn't know that. It wasn't the plan. I was pretty set on becoming a math teacher. Um, and then I remember, so I started in the summer and like the program was like fun. But then as soon as this, like the actual, like you get placed in a classroom and like the school kind of was, it was a shit show. And it was just like a huge eye opener. So there were like, kind of like two things or three things. So for you get like going in to become a teacher you get this thing called a placement so you end up going and like actually like teaching in a class and you have like a, a mentor teacher is this mm -hmm. high school or no this is uh, high school yeah okay. teaching yeah. high school um my placement teacher got sick and so they like totally just like they're like, you know, like yeah and then i they're like the the program i was in they're like we've never had this happen before we don't know and so they're like just like try to figure it out 
And so then I like had to like literally go from math teacher to math teacher and ask them to be my mentor. Like, and during that time, I'm just like, I don't like everyone that's, I maybe have an interest in, like, I actually don't really care. And like, they tell me what they're doing and it sounds horrible. Right. And then as that continued on, I finally got placed. And then like within the first like two weeks, they were told me like, they're like, oh, like you can't take the students outside. You can't do this. You can't do that. And then I was like, okay, well, that seems like a bunch of, like a big load of crap. If I can't do all these things, like how can you teach if you like can't go and do like real world stuff? Mm -hmm. um, and so that like really pissed me off. And then, so I was like, number one, the second thing was that I like, this professor like gave me a bad grade. I'm not saying like I was pissed off bad grade, but I was like, Hey, like you said, you didn't like my writing. Like, can we discuss how I can be a better writer? And it was this huge fiasco. She was like, I'm not changing your grade. All these things are like, I'm not here to change my grade. Like, I don't care about my grade. Right. Like what do you do? It's a B like whatever. And then the, all of that culminated with, I ripped my paper up in her face. And I said, I don't give a shit about that. I'm just trying to become a better writer. And then she like stopped and was like, oh, you actually just want to be a better writer. I was like, I've been telling you that for like the last 30 minutes. And then this is preposterous in my mind that I haven't been able to communicate that clearly to you. Um, and then that she was like, my office hours are done, whatever. Um, and then that was that. And then um, during the last little bit of water pool, I cal actually calculated it. I was like, oh, I could just become a substitute teacher, have literally zero overhead, zero effort, and make almost the same amount of money, not get the health insurance, but get to choose what days I want to work. And I was like, this is preposterous. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm just going to substitute teach to get myself on, like, get my feet on the ground and mm -hmm. just like go to Santa Cruz and surf all the time. Sure. That's far. So, dude, I recently had an ex like, I'm teaching now and I had the same thing where it was like no guidance or anything and just like figure it out on the fly. And it's, yeah, it's definitely a lot of chaos and just like, you just kind of like smile and wave at least at first until you get your, your footing. Yeah. Yeah. You're, are you doing an adjunct professorship, right? Uh, yeah. Dude, that's super rad. Where, yeah. where? Uh, it's called city college. It's like one of the like city slash state schools, uh, in New York. So it's been that's sweet bad. and it's like, yeah, all the kids are super nice and like, um yeah everyone's really sharp and it's just like i don't know graduating from this school it seems like kind of almost like a golden ticket for for many people so yeah it's been cool yeah i think that's super rad because like teaching is like so just so awesome when you actually get to like help out and share and just like talk with people because like at the end of the day like as a teacher like yeah you're there to like teach the subject but like realistically you're there more to like facilitate like growth as a human and like what people can expect in life sure sure so yeah yeah. I think the teachers you remember, yeah, are lean more towards uh, towards that than whatever they're actually teaching. Marco, yeah. do yeah. you do you tell your students to listen to Blubhouse for extra credit? I should. I should. So probably the people that are commenting on our, our video. Right. Dude, uh, Garrett, on our most recent episode, we got like bots commenting on our video. And it's like I don't even think it was bots. Were they bots? I think they were just like random. They, they seem like bots algorithm. to me. I think the, the algorithm just like reached these random people and like it was active in the chat like right <laughs> garrett I, I wanted to ask you um for a while but i keep forgetting how much uh math do you feel like you've retained uh the the actual like i couldn't sit down and do much of the math that at all but um do you think you could uh, get back there quickly uh i mean i'd have to want it i'd have like but like the the concepts are still there but the actual like work and the process of like what how to like actually do a proof correctly that'd be right. a, like that's where the learning curve totally dropped off but like the the concept of you know it, like anything within the abstract algebra or like topology stuff like that like um that's all like still very practical i use it all the time um mm -hmm. but like the calculus and yeah, pretty much anything that was like more engineering based, like I, I, I honestly, I could not solve a Laplace transform to save my life anymore. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. I like, feel like it's I a great foundation though. Like, I feel speed. like, I feel like studying like math, physics, engineering, maybe like, a, I don't know, there's like a few things that you study and just like maybe philosophy too, that just like are a great foundation for like whatever you want to do in life afterwards. I mean, some better than others, but yeah, I feel like math is one of the, solid ones where you just like 
I don't know, you learn how to like think rigorously and learn like a complex uh, subject. Yeah, I, th I think math sets you up like perfectly well for um, to be able to think logically through the rest of your life. I mean, that's right. all, honestly all it was for me. It was like the ability to like be given a set of rules in a confined space, work through it and solve it. Um, that was like really fun. 95% uh, of like math professors would be like, this guy dropped math and went to go live in a fucking van. Like clearly he's not thinking logic. I don't <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that mustache I mean, well. do this mustache yeah the actual funny story um my i had an electric razor and it was dying as that. i was going and it was like it was almost lopsided and it like i had let it just like pull it out i was like <laughs> i was just pulling the hairs out of my face and i was like oh my gosh this is horrendous but at least like it, it it's, it's a look i like it <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I can grow a mustache if like my like like family was on the line. Like, I, yeah, you're, you're, I don't, I don't have, have much facial hair. I can if I like this, I would grow. I would have like little whiskers. I look like a cat. Or, like, I, like <laughs> I can't imagine you with facial hair at all. Like a beard, bearded Marco, crazy. Yeah, dude, that that neck beard doesn't come in. It looks. I got, I got the yeah. I can grow the mean Abe Lincoln, but I, I one time I grew it out, I looked like horrible and yeah. <laughs> Never. Oh, that's that's funny. Yeah. And then you got Tamor. Tamor is like, yeah, since I'm 12 years old, to be able to grow a beard. Bro, my nickname, bro, one of my nicknames growing up was Poof. Because they were like, <laughs> Tamor just goes home and goes Poof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that's so good. Wow. Um, yeah. So what about, so now you're living out of the van, shitting in the woods, doing that, like, how is you you're also doing some content creation on like obviously full time like doing photography things like that but now i know you got the blog and like yeah tell it like fill us in on on that part of 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 life uh, yeah so i mean essentially once i kind of hit the road or moved to santa cruz um and substitute taught i was like substitute teaching is cool but like there's got to be something more um during that time, also, I worked for Outward Bound, and the art director at Outward Bound was like, you take good enough photos um, to be professional. And I was like, I don't really know what that means. I don't know. I didn't know that you could like make money off of photos. Um, and then he was like, yeah, you can. And he, I'll pay you 10 times what you make now. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's pretty much set. Uh, and then he like showed me how to set up a business. He hired me for my first job. And it actually became my second job because he like mentored me of like how to like set up a business and market and everything. And I landed one job before that. Uh, and then went actually out to the East coast and shot a project there. And then, um, kind of like just been building it over time. I've always like, I've in the beginning, I was like, I dreamed of like doing surf and climbing. And at a certain point you, you realize it takes a long time to break into those industries. And it's not like, uh, once you do break in, it's not super lucrative and you're like, cool. Like, you know, you get a, like a really good job and it's like a thousand bucks and you like work your ass off for like right. three weeks and you're like, wow, I can't live off of that. Or like, I got like stuff published by Surfline and like every photo is like 25 bucks or 30 bucks. And you're like, wait, what? Like 30 <laughs> bucks for like, ultimate, ultimate supply and demand lesson. That's like a whole economic secret. <laughs> yeah. Like it was just like, I, like, I could not imagine like Surfline, which is like, you know, they've, they're posting it everywhere and like you know it's going on their blogs everything they're like 35 bucks you're like there's no way i can survive off of this like, <laughs> like it's just not feasible uh and so that's like when i learned like actually like what commercial work was and right. then started to like shoot commercial work and then you know you're getting paid like two to five maybe even 10 20k a day um right. like but also like that sounds good but that doesn't include like the pre-production that you like and, and the, yeah like everyone that has, you have to hire to like make the shoot happen and stuff like that. And um, sure. essentially just so, took that. Do you yeah. handle the full, like if it's like a big shoot, are you handling like hiring other people, like building a whole crew or is it like they're putting it together and you're like one of the like pieces in the puzzle or is it? A uh, it, it, it depends. Um, so like you, what I really like to do is like build my own project and then sell it. Um, I just, I love that. And then, I think it's it, one, it's more fun. It's something I get to actually do and something I love to do. Um, like I just actually today I've been marketing a, a surf film. Um, I really want to make this surf film and it's, I think it's pretty rad, but, um, 
you know, um, literally you start from a concept, like an idea that's literally nothing. There's, there's no money behind it. There's no nothing. Right. Um, and then, yeah, like, so like reached out to a bunch of surfers today, they all said, yes, I reached out and like, I built a deck and then now I shot the deck to uh, like close to 200 companies. And then now it's kind of like, I'll find out, I'll start finding out like today, tomorrow, next day, like two companies already said they're interested, which is like nice. Um, so it, it just depends on how good of a deck you build. That's is like a very like specific thing. Whereas like, to like, so go back to your, your question of like, there's usually two different ways. Like a company will call you up and be like, we want this done. Uh, and they give you the money to like do everything or like usually an agency will call you and be like, we need you to be a photographer or a videographer, whatever it is. And then literally they, you show up with your camera and you don't just like, they, work, right? they sent you a deck and they're like, show up on this day. And you're like, cool. Right. Like here I am. Gotcha. And then you do it. Interesting. So, Interesting. Yeah. And so with this surf project, that sounds exciting. What's the, uh, like, do you need one company to just say yes? Or can multiple companies go in and out together? Or is it like, I, yeah. Yeah, also, so interesting. I, yeah, I'll say after, yeah. It, it totally depends on on what it is. So like one company could be like, yo, we love this, we want it. And like they'll put 100% of the money behind it, say no one else can be a part of it. Gotcha. Usually that's unlikely. Uh just because like when you realistically think about it, like it's probably gonna take like a week to shoot. We're gonna need like the we're gonna have to have probably three to four surfers. So that's like you have to pay every surfer, like you'll have to pay me, you have to pay for the content usage um we're going to like rent vehicles like we're trying to get some like old vehicles um to like get a super like timeless look of like you know posting up on highway one like camping on highway one etc and so like all of those costs like you know like, in in grand total like to do this shoot and to pay everyone correctly and everything like you're probably talking like a burn rate of probably around seven to ten k a day so and for seven days of shooting so like you're looking at like seven yeah but like to make it, but like, you know, like probably going to get four to 10 companies. Like some yeah, well, will be like title sponsors. Some will be like product placement and you don't even know that they're really a part of it, but their logos and you there, know, yeah. 10 scenes or whatever. And then how does that work? Like, do you, do they buy it off you or do you like, do you get part of the royalties of however they use it or how does that like, or it just depends on how you negotiate it. Like, um, yeah. So once again, like this is like, you can go like literally people's careers are like, this is like the thing that they do is like figure out who like, that's like usually the job of an agent or like a licensing agent, uh, for a project like this, I'll, I'll own everything. Um, and then I'll license everything out at the end of the day. Gotcha. Um, the only place that that could like change a little bit is if say like somebody's a title sponsor and they're like, Hey, we want, you know, like first publishing rights or, or something like sure, that. Sure. You're like, you're like, okay, cool. Whatever. Sure. Um, so that's really like what it comes down to. Interesting. But most companies today like want other companies on board because essentially, you know, yeah, say, right. yeah, like say like, right. Like you end up with like Yeti on one, like they have what, like a million followers. And then, so they're like, all the other companies are gonna be stuck. They're cool. Like, mm -hmm. Exactly. And they're like, cool. Like we're going to co-post this and we're going to make like, Yeti already has a million. And then, you know, Ford has another million. So now we're combined 2 million practical reach on that's like three percent of two mil you know sure. is there and no platform like, where you can just like shop this around you have to go like brand to brand or is there like a um i'm not sure i i just go like contact to contact um sure. and like send you have people with email. these companies say again you have people with like you have relationships with people at a bunch of companies at this point and you'll just like reach out to them and be like hey i have this idea exactly yeah yeah like the one that like hit me back up today was like yakima i reached out to them and like within like 20 minutes he responded he's like this project looks sick i love it um yeah. you know what type of support do you want you know but that, like that's literally like what he's doing is he's collecting the information and then he's yeah. going to take it to the board like to his panel their next meeting and say hey we have this project it seems like a cool project these are the three needs he needs what can we throw at it you know, mm -hmm. and then it just takes some time. So, wow, that's pretty sick. What? I, Go ahead. I, one last quick thing: Have you have you heard of uh, this new model of like fundraising project? Project? It's it's kind of tech. I, I don't think everything's there yet, but it's like an NFT based sort of funding model. So, like, you would 
create you'd mint like nfts regard like related to your product so let's say it's 100k you, you uh mint like a thousand nfts hundred dollars each and then like whatever the uh whatever produces if someone someone would get one thousandth of whatever like the income is from it so like it's like buying equity in a project basically um and you could break it up how it works but it's pretty cool like concept and i think it's like one of those things right you don't need as much you don't need these like gatekeepers from xyz company to kind of fund you can have this more like grassroots kind of funding yeah i would be curious to see if so like like i've looked into nfts i think nfts are are rad and it's totally revolutionary i don't think the 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 world is quite ready right there, yeah. mm -hmm. like like you you there's still a lot of like you'd have to educate the people that you're sending it out to to be like hey like this is kind of like the idea behind it um and it would be a lot more of like a like like you said like a crowdsource instead of like a company sponsorship 100%. but like at the at the end of the day like i'm actually more interested in the sponsorship because i i want those companies to put money behind it so because then it'll my name will get out there more that, sure, that company sure. trusted me and that and that's like a bigger part because it's like that's how i fund personal projects at sure. the end of the day whereas like to like you know, I think Chris Burkhart could totally do an NFT based something or other. And like, I know he does that in NFTs with outside, um, they like released a platform and I'm not totally sure. I think some like, you know, I'm not totally sure like what he has going on specifically, but like you definitely could fund a project that way. Sure. I'd be kind of curious is like, you know, what the gas fees and everything would cost at, at the end of the day. Like it was merged, now it's cheap, right? <laughs> Merge just last yeah. night. Yeah, it's probably. It's probably I, don't, I don't even know what gas fees are now, but I, I imagine very low. I yeah, saw that ETH was down this morning, though. So yeah, I know it's 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 quiet for the winter right now. Yeah, <laughs> fucking ice age right now. But anyway. the, uh, other news besides the merge. What do you think about your about your boy Yvonne? Have you heard about this, Gary? Yvonne Chouinard? Uh, dude, I I literally logged into LinkedIn today, and I I could not stop scrolling. And like literally, if I scrolled on LinkedIn just to like catch up with anybody that did anything, I couldn't see because all I saw was Yvonne Chouinard. <laughs> you heard about this, like, Marshall? No. What, what happened? The the CEO of Patagonia gave away. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I don't yeah, fully I mean, understand what that means because I didn't really read into it. But he I mean, basically, it's, go ahead. I don't know. Like so, so I think it's rad what he did. It, it's it's cool. It's revolutionary. Also, at a certain point, you realize and look at like like the whole point is like he has he has a company that has a, a valuation of a billion dollars like which theoretically because he owns the company makes him a billionaire what right. he did was he actually, set up it's, it's three billion, billion. it's three billion but yeah. whatever yeah okay yeah. all around three billion. Right yeah and so what he did was he created two trusts and the and the trusts now own everything but at the end of the day one of the trusts was so one trust holds all the voting policies like all the voting rights the other trust holds all the financial sides right and so what the voting side does is that's like there's only like five positions and like one of the positions is like his family and so it's like like not saying that like what he's doing is anything shady or anything like that but it's like like it's not it, fully it, it's not like he, deceptive. yeah it's, it's not like he gave away all of his money like his family still has a seat on the board to where they're still keeping money and right. the 98 percent of the company that is the financial aspect like the other 98 percent of the the votes um or the shares and all of those are are still um it, they're still a for-profit company you know and sure. and it says right in the like the if you actually dive into it like it says like they're holding money for everything that they need and whatever they find is like no longer necessary or above their like threshold they're mm -hmm. giving it away for the plan I I I actually kind of like the better though to be honest because I feel like if you have like a one time sale right and like let's say it's three billion dollars and they put it into the environment right like sure that's great and like I'm sure plenty can be done with three billion dollars but like over time a company that's like constantly cash flowing and also will still retain its value and like I don't see a future really where Patagonia is not you know continuing to do well like I don't know just constantly it, it pumped out I think like I I want to say it's like a few hundred million dollars a year um and i don't know i just feel like in in perpetuity like that i don't know just has like much bigger can have a much larger impact oh for sure like yeah and think about like the compound the compounding interest that's going to happen with that over time sure. like yeah 
and, and like that was the big thing is like they literally said like our share our only shareholders the earth or like i think that was their, like their slogan and what they said is they just compared it to like if they would have made the company go public sure. so there's like we just didn't want to have to like deal with you know all the headache of having to like like we're here for the long term we can't be a public company because at that point you're no longer there you're like you're there for your shareholders sure sure mm -hmm. and so like that was the whole thing interesting so, i know yeah. uh i know apparently I, the largest nonprofit in the world can you guys guess one percent for the planet i don't know i have no idea i can't catholic church Ikea? Ikea? Ikea, bro. Ikea has like this massive tax loophole where it's like a nonprofit. I don't know exactly how it works like under the hood, but Ikea is a not a Swedish nonprofit. Uh, and then it doesn't like Sweden's taxes are like wild. So it's like this huge loophole. Um, but yeah, I don't, it doesn't seem like this is the same case in any way, shape or form, but uh, yeah, it's really. I mean, that's pretty cool. That's a good loophole. A fun fact. A fun fact. Yeah. For, for Other IKEA fun fact is they consume one percent of the world's wood. I don't. I don't know if that's still true. That was like back in twenty ten, yeah. <laughs> which blew my mind to think <laughs> like one full percentage of the wood went to one company. Yeah. <laughs> one percent of the wood that is consumed. Yeah. Right? Like not okay. per year. Yeah. The, it, there's a graph that's pretty crazy. It shows like when IKEA. It like it shows the amount of like furniture in landfills and it like just directly like follows like ikea's like revenue basically yeah it's like once ikea came like people used to buy like nice shit you know like nice things spend a bunch of money and now it's like great you buy this table throw it away in like two years like whatever. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah crazy there's some good stuff at ikea though facts we were saying yeah. I, I was saying the other day ikea is like you get a two for one you go there you go shopping and it's like a free like escape room too like it's like a full lesson. <laughs> I don't know the last time I went to IKEA, but yeah, it's been like I, I vowed never to go again because I my parents took us like they wanted to buy some shit when we were kids. They try to leave the same way there. I was right. slightly <laughs> no, no no no. I was slightly too tall to enter like the kids' play area. This was or, last I year. feel like my mom just slipped like <laughs> <laughs> my mom just slipped a guy at 20 be like don't let him get in but like my sister's in the playroom like fucking like playing with kids and having mad fun hey, like outside doing no i'm doing math homework and i'm like this is fucking bullshit i'm never going back <laughs> but now he's like looking at the ballroom he's like i just want to go play the balls Literally. dude the, the we talk about this like kind of frequently like going into an office for work versus working from home love being in an office if you have that kind of job but the commute sucks i feel the same way about like shopping these days like like if i was going to go into ikea i remember as a kid i thought it was so fun or like even going to costco is like i like it I like costco's working. honestly kind of fun then. yeah costco's mad fun um remember we used to go just as a squad in college yeah. like super as fun. long as there's a good I'll, sample day yeah oh man. i'll never forget we used to buy I'm not the chicken breast. No, no, no. You know, like if it's like someone's doing like lawn lawn work, there's like those big like garbage bags full of like grass trimmings or whatever. Yeah. Whatever. These like massive bags. They used to sell bags that big, just full of tortilla chips for like three dollars. And every in, like our house, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. We used to have like this mount, and I'll never forget that. I was like, I've never realized I needed like 15 pounds of tortilla chips until I saw this. Like, yeah. I great. mean, having having the Isaac's car and the Costco right there in my family's Costco membership was so clutch. Be, yeah. Like we'd go get steaks and like GMO chicken that was like roided up with Tren and fucking testosterone. And we used to we ate well senior year, dude. We used to make chili like every every other day. The pizza at Costco too, you could feed like a small yeah. village on one slice. One slice yeah, did you guys seventeen hundred calories? Later. Did you guys ever do the uh, Great American Challenge or whatever it is? I did it one. I did it one year, but instead of five people, we did seven people. So it was pretty soft. It wasn't like uh, okay proper. Did you do it? Uh, no, none of my teammates wanted me to be a part of it because they're like, "You're not gonna help with the drinking." <laughs> so like, oh, it's not. It? Yeah, but you're good with I mean, puzzles. I feel like. <laughs> 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 so I bring to the table. Puzzle. Dude, I remember the first time I saw Garrett drunk was like 
when you were in grad school. Yeah, probably. Maybe, maybe yeah. one time before that. I mean, I, yeah. I you were I, dating this girl whose name I won't say, who will never watch this podcast, so I don't feel bad about bringing up this story. <laughs> Two days later. <laughs> but Gary comes up to me, he goes, bro, I'm fucked up. I'm like, what's up? He goes, I just told her I love her. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, um, the Great American Challenge was crazy. Like, I feel like I don't want to describe what it is for my parents' sake, but it's it's um it's some like frat bro Olympic shit. Did you yeah. ever do it, Marco? I don't know. I maybe I don't think so. I think I came like the tail end of some friends doing it and like helped out, but that was it. Yeah. Um it was some of the like, things in college, like who makes this shit up? I don't I just don't know. I don't. I feel like my freshman year, I lived on a degenerate like floor in my dorm, and after that, I cooled down so much because we did so much wild shit. I just like it's exhausting to think about people who carried that intensity for four years. Like, and I we know people like that, you know. Yeah, some people don't give it up either. Like once even now, once yeah, after, four years uh, are up, they're like still going. <laughs> yeah, like, that's. I know people that still play die like every weekend in San Francisco, and it's like, okay, die is fun, but part of the fun of it is the nostalgia and missing it, you know? Yeah, that's for right. sure. Well, they're they're gonna become what they play, right? Are you really that good at hand eye coordination? That was a bit of a reach, <laughs> with you. I'm trying, we're trying. The, the green, the green, the green shirt squad got us there. Right. Um, <laughs> gee, when are you gonna make it out to to New York? Or That's, what are you doing? At, will we have time? No, we won't have time, right, Marco? Isaac's wedding weekend, probably. Maybe, probably not though. Um, maybe at Sunday we're gonna be in the in uh Santa Clara and like the Bay Area in general. August, uh, sorry, October like twenty second, if you're around. Twenty okay. first, twenty second, twenty third. Okay. Could... Right. Yeah, I think that could actually work out well. Let's go get Sue's. I miss Sue's. Yeah. I've not had Sue's in forever. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Sue's, like, every bite takes, like, 50 minutes, like, half an hour <laughs> off your life expectancy, but it's worth it. <laughs> Sue's was so yeah. good. And the soft serve. Yeah. That place was just, like, someone sat down and was, like... like what does what every am, college like, student yeah. need? <laughs> <laughs> They're, like, I mean, you know how, what? how much do you think you can have? Sauces, they're like, now nah, how about just vats of like oil and spices? Like, oh, I don't want to think about it. You know, the, the ironic thing is actually growing up, I had a Mongo like all you can eat Mongoli Mongolian barbecue place like that. Um, and we went there all the time. And just, you know, just those feed. places don't exist in New York. Really? There's not a, if, if you Google Probably map expensive. search Mongolian barbecue in New York, not a single place comes up. There's another name for it too. I forget what it's called. I saw one once in like the back of like a, like a, midtown like deli spot ones but it's not like a yeah it's not like a thing like you haven't like on, sure. on el camino if like a couple like a mile down there was another mongolian barbecue yeah, place like gooey gooey or something like that um bro we got to do the great the great mongolian challenge that's the next uh it's like the adult <laughs> version <laughs> what conquer half of fucking asia yeah. <laughs> you got to eat like like 15 like between five people you got to eat like 15 Sue's bowls. 15 Sue's bowls. You gotta like just go underneath the ice cream. Wait, machine you think you can house 15 Sue's bowls? No way. Yeah. The Marco most doesn't even have... meat. Dude, Marco doesn't <laughs> even eat meat there. anymore. I used oh, to yeah. eat meat. I used to not even get noodles or anything. I was like, just miss me with that. And I used to get a big bowl of meat. I probably eat like two. I think two and like I could do I could do I two. Was two with those, but yeah. Uh yeah, I could for sure eat. I could probably put down four bowls. I think. Yo, you were a bottomless pit of a fucking human. <laughs> I've yeah. seen Garrett. If like we brought Garrett to Lucha, he could probably eat four Luchas. But Garrett With doesn't Lucha. like California burritos. No, nah, California peasant. burritos suck, dude. You're yeah, a peasant. That's because I'm a true Californian. <laughs> no, you're a peasant. Dude, what? Why, what fries? don't you like fries? Why not? They're why, elite. Why do you, no, you it don't need fries in your in your burrito. No. No one talks about need. I don't need like a lot of things, but they're dope. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's like that's like 
a Del Taco. Like, why do I order tacos and get a side of French fries? Like, no, like not into it at all. What about a side of fries? Like carne side of fries? Yeah, it's don't be a fire idea. No, you're just you're just a peasant. That's really. Don't awesome. be a fire idea. You make like you take a, a, a potato, right, and then you slice like I'm cross section through. No, no, cross section through, and you cut out like a taco shell, basically. Then fry that, and then put the like taco inside. That was innovation. I'm not like, sure. I'm taco totally on potato chips. But it's like a fry. It's like a big fry. Like a big. Imagine like a flat fry, but like whatever, a big like curved fry. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I got it. Oh, like so a so shell. The, the shell is a so potato. The potato, like is, a baked potato taco. It's like yeah. you're trying to avoid wheat, and you're yeah having. Or take like a big thing, or you can make like a big thing of like like tater, like uh, hash browns, and then wrap it. Like, oh, that'd be fire. Yeah. So that would be good. I'd be into that. Oh man, I'm so happy now. I'm making burgers tonight, and I could not be more excited right now. Really? I, yeah, because I make good burgers. What are you talking about. Gary, what, what's your go-to dinner? Like, what do, what do you make, like, out in the woods? Fucking. Like, when I'm actually, like, on an expedition or something? Or, like, when Are I'm in the mountain boat? housing? Do you eat meat? Uh, yeah, I eat meat. Yeah. Marco doesn't eat meat anymore. I, d- I think, I don't, I pretty much eat everything. I can't think of anything that I don't eat. Except for California. Uh, I mean, I would eat it if it was in front of me. I'm like, I just wouldn't order a California burrito myself. Dude, I remember one time I was like really down in life and Garrett was hanging out with me a lot. And he was like, yo, I'm going to go to REI. Like, do you want to come with me? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I was like, yo, can we make like a five mile detour to get a California burrito? He was like, for you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you guys went to Defara too. And I was like, oh, I'm not about it. And I didn't realize how like iconic Defara was at the time. But yeah, I ended up going and realized, yeah, it is like overhyped, but. It's, it's definitely overhyped, but it was still good. But it was good. I know. But we yeah, had pizza the I, night I before, it. also. Yeah, we went to that place in Forest Hills. Man. That was good. But, yeah. So, yeah, what are you eating in the woods? Like, um, I mean, I don't know. Project. Recently, I've just been eating like super cheap. Like, I, I bought like what you would imagine a prepper to have. Like, it was like this big plastic tub um, of like dehydrated food. But that was just because like I was on like a. I was doing a, like a circ traverse, so like we were climbing like over eight thousand vertical feet in three days. So it's like we were just like always had to be moving. Um, but like I don't know, like if usually like backcountry meals, like you're. It totally depends. Like when we were when I was on Denali, it was like super mellow. Like we had like eggs and bacon and like good food every day. Like you know, like we had massive like pasta dishes and stuff like that. I mean, if you're going light and fast though, like you will probably bring some like dehydrated food and sure. like some powders and bars like mm-hmm. it's definitely not good for your health um, did you uh eat a lot of cake in the back country <laughs> no <laughs> no I, I usually don't eat dehydrated cake. cake uh no i've actually never heard of dehydrated cake so don't know what you're talking about there man um it's not an rei right <laughs> maybe maybe <in> patagonia <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like a Patagonia. Von Schwenard sounds like he's into dehydrated backcountry cake. <laughs> 90% of Patagonia's farms are going to. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. That's why he created Patagonia Provisions, dude. <laughs> just, just for that. Yo, I'm, I'm honestly a fan of those mountain houses. Like, I remember the first time I had one when we went on uh, the Grand Canyon trip my freshman year. They're hit Man. or miss. Right. Now, the beef stroganoff, elite. The lasagna, elite. Yeah, that one's good. I like, I mean, yeah, I like them. I think, um, I think Backpackers Pantry is better than really? Mountain House. Yeah. It's a hot and, take in the community or not? I mean, I don't think really anyone cares. Uh, yeah, people like, about that life no don't case, care about yeah. fine dining. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like at, at the end of the day, like I think you, you would start to hear like, um, the people who are like bougie about it, they're probably like, "Oh, I want like peak refill." Like those are like actually like they're like these like amazing like curry dishes and stuff. Or like dehydrated there's one called like yeah maybe dehydrated cake. I, they actually have a lot of desserts too, so they could have it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like yeah, peak refill is like a pretty big one. I don't know. There's there's also like it's like good food or something like that. I think is what it's called. 
and that that one's like i think it's like 10 bucks or 12 bucks a a meal which is like pretty absurd because like mountain house is like six so do you ever go to nice restaurants uh what are you considering nice restaurants like 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 i'm not going to like three-star michelin rated restaurants like no I, not those I mean, but maybe i mean like, like a couple of those but are, are like there like steakhouse nice, equivalent, maybe. like a, steakhouse, yeah, like, a steakhouse I mean, like i went i went to sushi like a couple nights ago yeah that was, i don't know i don't know you if that's go to any indian food in in uh no indian food in in Tahoe. no i did get a, a pretty nice indian restaurant in canada though they have good um, indians there <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, it was Himalayan food, essentially, is what he said. But I, it was just, I don't know. I got some sog, so I was like, I don't know. It's good. I like sog. I'm, I'm happy you pronounced that correctly because Marco tried to pronounce that word the other day, and he said sag, and I was like, dude, I want to punch you. <laughs> I mean, I really like Indian food. I remember, like, growing up, I would like. I mean, I grew up in like totally a place where there is like we had round table pizza, and that was it um everything else was like uh, yeah but you had to drive like well you had to drive 10 minutes just to get to round table and then like if you wanted anything else it was a 20 to 30 minute drive mm -hmm. so it's like you know at that point i don't know it's just not worth it like so i ate at home my, my mom made amazing meals but like um the fuel of every great human <laughs> is mom's cooking yeah but i did eventually find out about like indian food I think in high school when I could drive and then it was like during one summer I was like, what's this? And like that went and then like my world was changed. Have you had my mom's food? Yeah, dude, your mom's food is amazing. She made like those little pepperoncini things. Amazing. Like, I don't know. I don't know what it's called, but dude, it was <laughs> I don't so know what you're good. talking about, to be honest, but she's, yeah, she's Pakistani. Pakistani pepperoncini. They're, they're, um, <laughs> They're little peppers, and you're like, my, you're like, you told your mom you had to make them, like, and I think we They're maybe deep had deep fried in like a dough. No, it was just, I don't remember, but um, definitely was, was not peppers. It was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my mom will I, listen to this. She listens to every episode. She's gonna be like, no, it was the, oh, it might have been bitter gourd that she made. You know what bitter gourd is? I'm was it idea. bitter? Whatever, yeah, it, it tasted matter. like lemon was on it. Yeah, mom puts lemon on everything. Um, <laughs> she actually called I mean, me like Tang Moore is born. Just like she called me yesterday. Squeeze. She's a lemon. She called me yesterday and she's like, "You got to come home." I'm like, "Why?" She's like, "I just made this chili, like the best chili I've ever made." And I'm like, "What did you do?" She's like, "I put lemon in it." <laughs> <laughs> but she said it, and my sister's texting me like, "Dude, you got to come back. Like this is the best chili she's ever made." <laughs> Same was like in the Uber ever. Like, I'm like, damn. <laughs> How far away from your parents do you live now? Uh, if I take the train, like 40 minutes. If I take an Uber, like 20, maybe even 15. Okay. Probably like a yes. mile and a half. Oh, do you want to Not like walk? two miles, maybe. Yeah, I could, but Same it's bike. like. Yeah, I feel like I'm, two miles in New York, you can get there faster by walking. Yeah, but it's not Manhattan. Like, I'm in Brooklyn, and it's you have to go like over a bridge into Queens. So it's less of like a. Uh, it Bro, feels like more ferry. hike. Ferry would be light. That'd be quick. Quick walk I gotta to the water. I got to get to the ferry. All right, the, the walk to the water is like 15. Usually when I want to... Okay, so I go to visit my parents on Sundays. And nice. I usually don't... Like, I'll go there for, like, brunch and dinner. So when I wake up, I'm usually starving. So I'm like, I don't want to fucking have a long commute. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I'm usually Uber. I usually take the train there and then Uber back. Okay. You got to get a yeah. horse, bro. That's your the train out. could be like 25 minutes. You know, it just depends if you catch the train. It's like a very quick uh, commute. Hmm. Like, it's that not could... substantially longer than like if I wanted to go visit Marco. Okay. Yeah. How far apart do you guys live? Pretty close. Like it's 20 probably, minutes. 25. Like, train ride itself. No, because I can oh, take actually, the M, but I can take the M train, which is right here. Oh, yeah. That's my the favorite. M train goes straight to Broadway Lafayette yeah, and then walk to you. So walking plus train, 25 minutes. Oh, that's rad. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, it's good. We, you got to, dude, I'm saying, but, Garrett, you have to live one year in New York. Like, you really got to experience it. You would love it, dude. 
I'm I mean, not saying I when. I'm not saying when. Sick. Yeah, I think it would be sick. But to me, that'd be like something I'd pr- probably be looking at like when I'm 40. Yeah. Bro, people live here in a van, though. Actually, though. Yeah. Like, that's, there's I, spots I, where I, you post up. Yeah. That's, that's horrible. Yeah. That's <laughs> like, I mean... Like if I'm going to I think you York, should do like, like what Jimmy did. Like when you become a super famous and successful content creator and adventurer, get an apartment in New York. Spend two months here out of the year, but just have one in New York and like and have send one your kids. Tons. Yeah, that'd be sick. I mean, doesn't Ch- I think Chai lives in in New, New York, York in, that, in that place though? Yeah, yeah. Which, which he's been putting out so much freaking so so many movies yeah. and everything. This I mean, is my his, bio. I think, I think this year alone, must he, be I, insane. Uh, yeah, it has to be. But like, yeah, he put out three movies and a ten-part TV series this year. Yeah, like, we're talking about Jimmy Chin, like, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Right. I just can't imagine that that workflow. Did you watch that Elon documentary he directed? It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I watched it, um, and then I ran out of service and like yeah. Finish it. Do you get the Starlink? Do you get the Starlink setup? No, dude. I've been looking at it though. It seems pretty good. It's it's a hefty investment though, like six hundred bucks or something like that up front. How much? I think I think the one that goes anywhere, yeah, is like six seven hundred bucks. But I'm sure the resale value on it is probably. eh, Are you buying like a like a router or modem to like receive it just one time? Oh wow! And well, you buy the yeah, you buy a dish, but you have the dish always has to be connected to power. And then um, you still pay a monthly fee when you use it. I think it's like the monthly fee is like 130, but there's some rumor that he's like work at uh, Elon and AT and T are like working together to do something, and then at that point it'll be T-Mobile. Super, like, cheaper. He did, uh, T-Mobile. T-Mobile goes right like anyone who has T-Mobile, your phone can. I think it's it in like 2023 can get like basic text and call service. And literally anywhere in the world. T-Mobile though. T-Mobile's a piece of shit. No, T-Mobile is pretty fire. It's like a pretty like. For the money, it's, it's pretty when cool. I was growing up, kids got bullied if they had T Mobile. Yeah, okay, you had AT and T or Verizon, and if you had Sprint, forget about it. You like didn't tell people, like, yeah, I don't have a phone. Like, nah, but Sprint had that like walkie-talkie phone. That shit was elite. Yeah, Sprint had like a couple <laughs> of phones. Yo, the T Mobile, T Mobile, honestly, checkmated the whole game though when it had With the, the uh, sidekick. No, the, oh, sidekick, the sidekick. Who had that the razor? Verizon. I think all of them had it. Yeah, but the, the, the sidekick. sidekick it was the one where it was like it was like this, and then you would like slide it this way, and the whole screen would just like pop up like this. Oh yeah, I had that one. It's like it goes like this, right? And it's like uh, it, no, no, it, it didn't like flip. It, it, it was it like this. Slid. It was like it was like yeah, it just slides up. No, no, it, it was like it, you had a so extra. Had a, you would yeah. know if you had a sidekick. I would know if I had a sidekick. You probably had like a sidekick dupe, like a fucking, I don't know. Couldn't think of something. Else. Oh yeah, I didn't have that. I wonder. I I wonder what phone I had though. But do you remember when uh Blackberries became popping? Yeah. And BBM. you would play Brick Breaker and BBM. Crazy. No, nah, I did not grow up in. I oh, do. I lived out in the middle of nowhere. Like yeah. we. Yeah. Like I remember like seeing friends and like like Sacramento was like an hour away, you know, and then people would be like super hyped to like. You know, see something new. Like I grew up in farmland, mm. so yeah. yeah. But you were drinking like fresh milk and shit, right? <laughs> yeah, I still drink milk, dude. I don't know, fresh, <laughs> like unpasteurized, raw milk. Uh, no, I mean, so my my family has a not not anymore, but growing up, we had a a dairy farm in Minnesota that we'd like go back and work on. Um, and like, yeah, you'd literally just like straight out of the udder and then drink it. It's supposed uh, to be really healthy. It's like food. warm, right? It's like warm. <laughs> yeah, it's warm. <laughs> uh, but <if laughs> you didn't you get the refrigerator want... attachment, like. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if you don't, if you don't want warm milk, you just walk over to the tank and then just scoop it out of the tank. But like, theoretically, you're not technically allowed to do that because, like, that's where like every yeah, big yeah. milk company is going to come and they just put their hose and it fills up the tank and it's just like. <laughs> it's on the sides. <laughs> like yeah, like if you if you mess something up, like it's supposed to be. Like it's unpasteurized milk, but it's like, like all the hair that came off of the udders and stuff isn't is no longer in there, sure. or like all right. the dirt, et cetera. Sure. And so it's like cleaned, but like you would yeah, really mess up. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like you leaned over, and then you're you're drooling, and you're like your drool falls in. Like everyone just got your drool. 
like six thousand people. It'd be people. so it'd be so terrifying to know how much of that actually goes on. Like you or yeah. like I don't want to know. You don't know how the sausage is made, yeah. No. How sausage is made, dude? No, oh, how yeah. the like this the state, you know, the saying, like you don't want to see how the sausage is made. Does it say about hot dog or sausage? Whatever. I didn't know that that was a I didn't know yeah, that was a saying. Mm-hmm. Don't uh, find out how sausage is made. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty like gross. when people you remember that phase that everyone's like, oh, cowspiracy, like you have to watch you. Like, no, I don't want to have this <laughs> shit in my brain. Like, I enjoy a burger too much. I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah. Bro, like, someone posted the other day, it was like, it was on it, this guy got fired from his like, he worked at like this like pig factory or something. And he was like, he put the place on blast and he was like, this is literally what they're feeding the, the hogs. And it's like food mixed with, I'm not even joking, just straight trash, <laughs> like, like straight up garbage. Look, that's and why like, mo- apparently yeah. it's legal. But Muslims like, have known, bro. Stay away from pork. We've known. <laughs> yeah. Pork. I think that's pretty, pretty true. Just don't, don't eat pork. Yeah. Pork Although, is, like, tastes know, like a lot of, a lot of pork is really good in Mexican food. Yeah, opposite. Exactly. Yeah, funny thing. This is like a hilarious moment. It wasn't, I feel like it wasn't funny in the moment, but now it's pretty funny. When we were in New York, we were searching around for just a place to like chill and just like relax. Drink Remember, we tea. talked to these random people yeah, and then yeah, we, yeah. we ended up going to this fucking Chinese restaurant. <laughs> like a I remember this yeah. place. Yeah. place. Also, this place, had, <laughs> this place has like neon <laughs> palm trees outside, like sausage yeah. we walk in there also the menu was wild that was a crazy ass menu and we walk in we're like we're just here for tea and the guy was like what it's like a glitch like, in the, the guy was like the guy's like what are you talking about he's like we're like we're just here for tea and this place for context just gave like certain chinese restaurants to just give you tea for free and we're like yeah we're just trying to chill here and have tea but like we'll pay for it and the guy was like could not comprehend what the hell we were talking about. <laughs> and he was like speaking English. He just like couldn't comprehend that we wanted to sit here and just drink tea. Yeah, it wasn't a language thing. They were like, this no, 100%, yeah. This doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? And we literally didn't sit down and have tea. Yeah. I think we took like a sip and walked. I remember walking out because we were like, Dude, they're going to charge you like 40 bucks. We're like, no. Yeah. We should have just ordered some shit, whatever. Yeah. I think we were full. Like, I think we were full. I think we had just yeah. eaten something. Yeah. Exactly I don't remember what, what though. I, I forget where we ate, but it was an outside place that we ate. And during that time, we discussed uh, why dating apps and how they should be recoded. Hmm. No, we didn't eat there. We were just sitting there with the dog. Oh, right? really? There was like, oh, the yes. To us. And then the people, the place was closing. They had to kick us out. Yeah. But yeah. we didn't eat we there. Drank, we, we drank chocolate milk. We, we killed a bottle of chocolate milk. Where did we eat that? <laughs> no, I think we just got some halal or something. Oh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, Marco and I are done with halal. You guys are done with bro, halal, dude. We the other night, bro. Yeah, like Marco was saying, the inflation on halal is just crazy. It's almost a hundred, like a hundred, like a doubling of price. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. It's you can literally get it. You pay like bowl. eight bucks. It's like ten, nine. bro. No, uh, we haggled to nine, and that guy was like really pissed. Yeah, I, we haggled this guy down a dollar each on each plate. I'm like, I'm, we're not like, paying this much. Yeah, I'm like, like bro, right. I grew up on lamb over rice should be six dollars. Like, honestly, you go to Queens. No, remember when I drove you to the airport? We stopped to get halal. Yeah. That was five dollars, and that was elite halal. They had the that touch of good, Pakistan dude. in there. Like, <laughs> touch of Pakistan. In there. That was that was Pakistani halal in Jackson Heights. Marco, I can't believe I've never taken you to Jackson Heights. We gotta go. I've been to Jackson Heights, but yeah, but you haven't been with me. That's not the same <laughs> thing. Garrett's been. I have been. So you need right. to be there. I need, need to, go. to go. Well, I just the best go. Pakistani foods in, in Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Like, best Indian Pakistani. Like, did, did the, you guys see this video? Good. It was like it was it was this guy, and he's like he's like the best Chinese food. I think it's probably like Mexican food, and probably somewhere like I like Indian food, some other ethnic food. Like, he's like the best, like Chinese food. All star rating for best one is three point five stars. I'm like Yelp. He's like. If it's four stars, that means like a lot of white people are eating there. Four stars yeah. and above, too many white people are eating there. The service is too good. They're why? Like it's it's not authentic food. He's like it's a three or below. It's like actually not good. But he's like three and a half. It's like the food's fire, but the staff is treating you like shit. Like yeah. So I was like, you that. probably have a stomach ache after, but it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It. I agree with that. Yeah, until you go to Uda, like that place is amazing. 
You've been What's there, right? It's a, it's Gary, a you drank place. milk out of the udder, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight out of the udder. <laughs> <laughs> Should be a new shirt. <laughs> and then it just has a graphic of somebody. <laughs> oh, over the big million. <laughs> <laughs> so what's this place Ada? you've been bro your your girlfriend told me about it the the restaurant in queens the indian restaurant in queens you haven't been no well, there's bro, another place dude. there's another place damaka Ada, and uh sema there are three restaurants actually there's two more remember we got those chicken sandwiches in the east village udd a d d a Ada. it's not Ada, bro oh. it's Ada. all right I didn't know. See, I didn't his, know his his pronunciation. Yeah, he I've goes sag, there. dude. I made sag the other day. The fuck is that? You made your skin droop. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um. Yeah, I've been there. It's like I think it's fine. I don't think it's like elite, but I think it's good. It's elite, bro. The okay, how, how's your Italian pronunciations? Oh, so bad. Bene. So, yo, his his Italian pronunciations <laughs> are so bad. Yo, Garrett, how do you pronounce the name spelled M A R I O? Pronounce that name. M A R I O, Mario. Like the video, Mario. Ask, right. ask Marco. Mario. No, it's technically Mario, <laughs> and then the white version is Mario. Yeah, he's a yeah, he's not. a it's Mario. Yeah, I'm telling you, you're gonna Look, tell the Italian no, no, guy. No, 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 no. He's right. Mario he's, no, no, no. He's right for New York it, Italian. Like, if you go to, like, Arthur Avenue, where his mom grow, grew up, like, the best Italian food in New York, hands down, the most, like, authentic. They're all, like, Mario. Like, he's Marco. He's not Marco. Um, I'm just kidding. But uh, but that's, like, New York creates its own pronunciations of things. Like, um, Garrett, the food, G-Y-R-O. How do you pronounce that? G-Y-R-O? Uh, I mean, it's a euro. But in but... New York, it's a gyro. Right. Yeah, he has a whack. No, yeah, it's elite. I'm a, the name Udda is officially ruined for me. Though. Udda? It's not Udda. It's <laughs> like my Udda. only take. Udda. It has a. It has pronounce a, it the Udda way. Glottal. So it's. I think it's called a glottal stop, where you pronounce the the D's twice because it's like Udda. It's not Udda. Udda. I don't know. You just hit me like fifteen words. Glada, stop! Like that's, that sounds like that sounds like the last thing you hear from your doctor before you start, you know, settling your business. Like, like um, you have a glada stop. Yeah, like fuck, bro. Just say, hey, man, really bad news. Later. Test game in. You got a glada stop. Oh, man. So, um, Garrett, what's on the agenda for the near future? Near future, um, starting next week, I have a project shooting a video for Gregory Backpacks, and then after that, shoot a kayak, um, or kayaks, and then once that's done, um, I got to use somebody. Uh, or kayaks, so like or there is or because it's like origami, uh, oh, they fold gotcha. all into each other and they're like super. Oh, uh, that's it. Yeah, and then I have a project in Yosemite at the end of the month. And beginning of October, and then I'll be in the bay just editing for like two weeks, and then I'm going to start that the the surf film project. Gotcha. Um, so you like you're confident that it's like everything is going to sort itself out, like funding funding secured type of situation, or like uh, I I already have enough. Uh, I already enough. have one client that's going to underwrite it. So like no matter what, like we can go make it happen, but whether or not it's actually going to become like a film that's like worthwhile and like, you know, we have enough money to go shoot one day. So gotcha. like you can like, right. Like you could cherry pick like Dawn Patrol in San Francisco drive an hour or so do another couple of shoots in like Pacifica and then sure. drive a little bit further down and then do a sunset shoot. That's going to be enough to like do a highway one surf video um but so why would you use the other seven days like you would just make it higher quality get more time uh i mean that's like at the end of the day like you can't you can't shoot like there's no storyline like the storyline is like you know we did a cool like we went and had fun and surfed three spots sure. um the actual storyline of this is um there's a they say it's out of print but amazon still sells it so i don't really think it's out of print um there's a it's like a red book 
a guidebook called uh, Surfing California. And, and the concept is to try to surf every one of those spots. Uh, it's that's in the book. guide. Say again. It's a pretty famous book, right? Surfing California. Uh, yeah, I, it's like it's famous in the surf world, but like, yeah. would you really know about it? It's like it has a red cover, and it's no, like, I wouldn't it was, know about it. But like the yeah, lore in the surf world is like pretty famous. Yeah, they're really hard to come by. They're like, I literally found mine in a window of a surf place that, and I went and snagged it because I saw it immediately. I was like, I have to get that. Um, and it tells you like the ideal wind direction, the ideal swell direction, uh, and period. And, and like, that's it. <laughs> like, and it, and it's like, don't paddle out this channel, paddle out the other channel. Cause you will die. Mm. It, like, like that's literally like, it's like, everything's one paragraph. There's no picture. Like there's a couple of pictures, but they're only pictures of like, what, like, like steamer lane, like what you would expect. Um, yeah, but it was printed in like 1973, I think. Author's like, still alive. Uh, I don't know. Author's been right. I don't know if he's still alive or not. Um, you should, uh, so work, reach out. Works on that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So like the the story the storyline we're going with is like trying to use amateur surfers who are still good that are going to like surf uh, try to like the idea is to like uh, like challenge the idea of localism using a guidebook gotcha. um, and see how it looks. <laughs> <laughs> how have you have you crafted a, like a, a narrative like story many times or is this like the first big like uh i've done several but um almost none of them see the light of day like a lot of times like yeah. companies will buy it and then it goes out on their social for one time like they'll like publish it one time and that's sure. that um yeah and it's like it's cool but like at the end of the day you're like you know, it doesn't help me out as a creator to like, sure. you know, like you collect a paycheck and that's awesome, but sure. you don't get any notoriety, which right. like is the, is the hard part, you know, like story storytelling is like, it works really well, but like at the end of the day, like, unless it's an epic story, it, there's really not a whole lot you can do unless you, you yourself can pump it out because like sure. they have to decide where to put their ad dollars. Sure. Right. You know? And like the, the ROI for like, selling a selling a sweater for a surf video isn't going to be very high like the roi is going to be investing in an ad that's going to go on on any like across all of meta and then that's going to like that's where they're going to get their roi like sure. and that's actually a big knock that patagonia got because they stopped advertising on meta products um so they took a huge revenue cut i think in like 2019 awesome. from that hmm. so yeah but yeah i mean i just like i just shot a mini doc on denali so like there's a storyline there um also in alaska i shot two other projects one is like for a sunscreen company and it, the storyline is like a perfect day of kayaking so it's like you know so everything you would expect of like you show up you go kayak check out this glacier hang out with some icebergs sure. kayak back um <laughs> you know did you take a swim the usual uh i didn't sw like i didn't hop off the kayak and swim but like once we were back to to landing i swam around the landing yeah um, um yeah like i mean it's glacier fed water so it's like just above freezing but it's right. like that's all the water in alaska yeah, we, so at a certain point it's like, goes, i gotta go to alaska did, it, yeah i was thinking about you and the cold tubs the whole time i was like dude i don't see how i like, i'd literally go in dip and I, I was out i was like this is way too cold you you build up to it like and then it starts feeling really good like yeah but how long do you have to be in there for man like that sounds two, horrendous two minutes two minutes but uh, it feels minutes, it okay? becomes very relaxing yeah two minutes to get like the maximum benefits like from a health perspective two minutes but sometimes you'll be feeling yourself and it'll just be like meditative and you'll be in there for a while i mean a while like five minutes you know okay uh, yeah same like, apartment <laughs> like frozen like <laughs> Yeah, because we always had uh, for for water polo, we had to do ice baths afterwards. But you had to do uh, footies on it, right? You had to you wore footies like to protect your feet, like those little like polyurethane things. Yeah, yeah, they're just like yeah. surf booties, um, and then you you put that on. But you had to be in there for fifteen minutes or something like that. Right, it yeah. probably wasn't below forty seven degree water even with the ice. Like to bring water yeah. down, like to because I go at thirty three degree water, that's like very hard to you know. Uh, 
do like just by getting a bunch of ice and then filling with water and you had the foot the booties on so that uh makes you able to stay in way longer your experience wasn't valid i know like i was yeah, soft I'm gonna say. <laughs> come try my cold plunge yeah dude but, How, right, so, we did like hour and five minutes we can keep going my sister's about to be here though uh, i can buzz her no that's fine up. i can buzz her in. what were you gonna ask her i was just gonna ask like so with your place like what do you it was like you got the cold tub. Did you, I? I remember you guys talking like you, you you talked to the owner or something of some cold tub. Did did you ever get a discount on that or what? No. So that was like the really elite company. That thing cost like ninety five hundred dollars. Oh and dang. What I did was like a DIY. So you buy a chest freezer and then you kind of like uh, you caulk the inside of it with waterproof caulk and then you just fill it up with water. Put a couple of uh, aquarium water filters in it and then you pump ozone gas into it and so and and you have a it doesn't jack you up no ozone gas is super super benign um and it just clear it cleans it keeps the water sanitary is more effective than chlorine um and you also well what i do is i have basically uh this device that's it controls electricity based on the temperature of the thing that it's in so only when uh the water goes above 34 degrees do i turn does the cold plunge turn on and cool it to 33 and then that happens a couple times a day okay it's loony but i'm loony i mean it sounds sick i mean like do you actually and you hit it every day twice a day yeah every day i used to do twice a day but i'm just on every day now you yeah, you get I get no I am not at all. I mean I've only been using it for like 2 months consistently uh like since I moved in. And before that I had gotten like a month then I go away then I come back for a month. So it's it's like something that really the benefits are kind of like meditation where like yeah you get a bunch or working out. You get a bunch in the beginning but you do get a lot more over time. Like if you're consistent with it, you know. Yeah, I can see that. Jeez. It's but, dope. Marco, you got yours or what? No, I usually just go in Taymor's <laughs> when he's uh when he's asleep. <laughs> Taymor um, just buzzes you in and you yeah, come up. I, I have a little a little uh I have to put like a fi my finger on it. It's got like top tier security. If if it five too many times, if I do like five, if I if we get the pin wrong five times, it sprays the ozone gas at me. It's like <laughs> 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 just right in the eyeballs. Ah! Yeah. It's... <laughs> oh man. Well, so what are you up to these days, Marco? Are, are you what tamor has got his cold plunge? What do you got? You got you he has out, fucking yeah. he makes vegan chili. That's what he got. You got vegan Great chili. Fire. Um, yeah, I sit in my vegan chili, boiling hot. It's the new cold plunge <laughs> turn. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's the the beans really soaking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Come out it's like it makes you look ten or two. Like you know, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it dies the skin. It's like ten and one. Yeah. Uh, what do I have going on? I in my apartment, I don't think I have anything like that interesting or cool. I don't know. You I have, have a fireplace that doesn't work. The wall. Yeah, I got this little piece of artwork here. Yeah, I um, think you're Thank you. I got a, a non-working fireplace. Looks like whaling. And <laughs> um, so yeah, you gotta come so, visit, dude. Yeah, you should come visit. You got. Just figure it out. Come for a week. I mean, I'd love to. I just don't totally know what I would do. What did you do the but last? Oh, you see, oh, yeah, yeah. This is the problem. You said this. You say this. You said this before the first time you came and visited, and then like you're like, "Wow, I love this city. I could actually yeah, see myself you, living here." You actually and have a job for, now. Yeah, but we work remotely, bro. Like, <laughs> work until three, then go fucking get pizza, chill out. If you go, we'll have we'll have a good time. Yeah, we'll figure it out. There's never a shortage of, of fun things to do. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we'll find some interesting. Like, depends when you come to. There's like, if it's warmer, there's like kayak in the river. If you want to do that type of stuff, I mean, we could do like normal city stuff. That's fun. There's some good climbing gyms. We're just gonna eat. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure there's urban a hikes, bro. Urban hikes. Like Mark and I go for walks. Like we'll go for like these five hour walks. Basically a hike. All right. Sounds good.
like a flatland hike. No, not much vertical, but I'm into it. Let's try to do next year for the fall. Okay. We'll do the it. time will pass. And Mark uh, and I are, are, are we're, one of the goals we have is next apartment to live in the same building. So that'll that'd be, be sick. Fun. I'll visit. Yeah. That'd be actually perfect. Yeah, it'd be cool. Um, when's the next travel trip? We're going to San Francisco um, yeah. for Isaac's wedding. The yeah. weekend of the but, 22nd. Like, work, work travel, though. Like when you guys both went to Mexico City. Well, we didn't go at the same time. Oh, you didn't? I thought we you went guys to went Miami. to Mexico City we to together. Miami. Miami. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. And then we missed each other in, in uh, Mexico. Mexico by like a week. Uh, okay. Oh, I thought okay. you guys went together and then I thought Tamar left early or something. Nah. No. But it was close enough, honestly, it could have been. Yeah. If someone from work is going to get to work in Ireland for like a month and a half. I was supposed to do that and then it like fell through and then this girl did it. I was like, yeah. What's the draw to Ireland? Do they just have good beer and pubs or what? I think it's just like good people. The nature, like there's certain parts that are really pretty, like nature wise. Um, yeah, I think it's just like drinking culture and just something know. different where they still speak English. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed, to, it's supposed to be, everyone's supposed to be really friendly. It's supposed to be a lot of nice things too. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Should I we, think uh, uh, for the next time you guys go to Mexico, you gotta let me know. We should all go and have a bro, just invite us. Invite us to your house, bro. I have to ask my parents if you guys can you took, come to that. Bro, house. you took Randy. My parents invited Randy. Well, that's <laughs> valid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like Randy was showing up at the house and then they were like, Randy, what are you doing for Christmas? He's like, I don't know. Like my family's in China and I can't go back. Otherwise my visa will expire. And they're <laughs> like, do you want to come to Mexico with us? <laughs> like that's not how that happened. <laughs> Which I still don't totally understand. Cause like, right. Cause like, he left he to Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. 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 It was just, it was something about, he couldn't go back to China cause then he wouldn't be allowed to come back. But Mexico was fine. I was like, I don't know. Like, yeah, that doesn't make it's sense. It's over my head. But I'm just saying, bro, we've been friends for a long time and you always talk up your your house in Baja. Or Yo, I'm trying to go to I'm trying to go to what was it, Minnesota? I'm trying to go to the milk farm. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying to go to the dairy farm? Yeah. 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 I'll ask, straight, I'll ask out that that. <laughs> straight out the other. Straight out the other. Oh man. That's great. Yeah, but we should take a trip uh, to Mexico. Wait, where in Mexico is your family's house? Tijuana? Uh no, no, no. It's uh, like a hour north of Cabo. Okay. It's on that so like, like little you would, like. You'd fly like into the... like San Jose del Cabo, and then um, essentially, like if you wanted to go to like you start driving the same exact way, then you'll take a toll road because um, you don't actually have to go all the way to Cabo and then come up, and the toll road just cuts you straight across, um, and it takes you towards a town called Todos Santos, and Todos Santos is um where like hotel california is like theoretically uh and they're 10 minutes um south of Toda santos and like a little surf break called pescadero fine so yeah. food good there uh, yeah yeah i mean um i mean it's like getting bougie now though um like uh -huh. one of the people just like one of the restaurants got rated best taco in all of mexico so oh, like, you know, better than Pujol, better. which apparently was cap. Uh, I was a Pujol. I don't even know what Pujol is, but Pujol is a is a, like a taco famous. restaurant in Mexico City that has the reputation of having like the best tacos ever. But yeah. a lot of friends that have gone have told me that it was underwhelming and it was more like the experience. The service, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this place is still super rad. Like you walk in barefoot, no shirt. Like it comes out of a taco truck. It's like, yeah, they have a truck that they cook in. The dude who uh, runs it, his name's Danny. He, like, actually That's learned how to good. become, like, a professional um, bartender. And, like, so he, mm -hmm. like, makes these, like, super rad drinks. And he used to, like, compete as a bar person. I don't even know what that means, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, he, like, won some awards uh, for cocktail his awards drinks. or some shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so people love it. I mean, it's a tourist thing. But sure. I mean, they used to be dirt cheap. It was like a dollar a taco. Now it's like five bucks a taco. So damn, it's, like it's just like that inflation. 
dude it is yeah yeah i mean but you can go you can go to this like other places other like, places it's a dollar yeah and it's a dollar like you can flat out like get a very like you will be overly full for 10 bucks yeah and, like that's what <laughs> i'm looking for <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> yeah like uh yeah los claros and pescadero like you show up you have 10 bucks like you're <laughs> walking out of there like ready to puke yeah, like you're yeah. so full Love it. That's you should. Yeah, dude, your marketing is really good. You should reach out to them. <laughs> ten bucks to kill a fly. Yeah, ten buddy. For yeah, ten bucks to walk out of here ready to. <laughs> yeah, bro. Oh, I, I was in Mexico. Wait, one last quick story. I was in Mexico City. I I like this place down the street. Great reviews for tacos. It's like, all right, I go there. Roommates stayed back. I go. I get these two tacos. A dollar, dollar fifty each. Like nukes. Like huge. Like two massive nice. ones fire like one of the better tacos i've had i was like this place is going to be a lot for lunch next day or like day after i was like yo come here for lunch we're going fire tacos he's like, all right we go we walk in usually had like last time i went the meat was all prepped this time the meat like wasn't prepped yet this guy pulls out like like imagine just like a regular shopping bag which is like raw meat just, <laughs> yeah. like this, just grabs it <laughs> throws it on the <laughs> grill right like this thing is just chilling in a regular plastic bag i'm like holy shit then yeah so i'm already like fuck and then he starts cooking he just wipes his hand on this like dirty rag and then starts cooking it <laughs> and then with his hand that hasn't been washed grabs like tortillas starts like cooking with them like touching the tortillas and then serves us the taco like purely why do you think it tasted tortillas. so good dude yeah yeah and then exactly. i was like i cannot believe i ate this yesterday <laughs> Bro, you probably a lot more dude it's so good yeah, yeah they dipped in a little bit of water for those tortillas and yeah, put it yeah. Down and, yeah his hands were just like red with the the, the, the meat yeah i was yeah, like I, I, the sauce. I can't believe yo did you go to el khalifa taqueria the chain marco yeah yeah it was did like you get the piece of the soup that was good yeah i didn't get it man. bro i don't know how you went bro i gave you so many fire recommendations that you didn't take i'm offended i went to some say what up all right can see? yeah yeah they could see you all right hey. we'll wrap things up this is my sister uh, i know i'm saying to the world we're recording the podcast oh. <laughs> live teacher. our two listeners right. garrett and my mom <laughs> yeah how many views are you guys getting on this thing the last time we got like 100 no last time we got like 100 yeah that was one i think they're like rewarding us with the algorithm now because we're consistent Wait, this nice. is episode 22. Yeah, dude, I was thinking about that. I was like, wow, like I, I was like washing my hands and I was like, wow, they're almost at a year. I was like, I wonder when this is going, like if they're gonna stick we're it like out. a half a year or like a half a year. Yeah. But you know who so wasn't thinking about it? Like the, the taco guy who wasn't washing his hands. <laughs> <laughs> he was just making the best tacos of your Lighter, life. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, all, all right. right. Well, thanks Much for letting love. me on, guys. Thank you well, for coming on. You don't have to hold on, hold on, hold on. Peace.